Hey guys, welcome to another Elvistory video. So, I will be doing a reaction and review to the Gates of Graceland Jungle Room Sessions video, which is hosted by Tom Brown. And his guest is Angie Marchese, who is the Vice President of Archives and Exhibits at Graceland. And in this video, they discuss um, the 1976 Jungle Room Sessions, which took place in February and October of 1976. And those sessions produced the albums from Elvis Presley Boulevard in Memphis, Tennessee and Moody Blue. Now, some people seem to have their opinions on why Elvis chose to record in the Jungle Room. And I will get to that later on after we watch this video. Now I'll be watching this video along with you guys and then when it's done I will discuss my opinions on that whole situation. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and I will see you when it's done. You might recognize where I am. I'm sitting in the jungle room just to right off the kitchen in the jungle room and with me director of archives Angie Marchese. Welcome Hi, back. Tom. Good Thanks. to see you again. Thanks for having me back. Thank you. And and here we are in the Jungle Room. And this year, 2016, we celebrate an anniversary. Yes. Of something that happened here in the Jungle Room that's legendary. And and you know there must be something involved because we have our archival gloves on. Well, we're going to talk about the Jungle Room sessions. Yes. So we're going back to February and October of 1976 mm, in right. this very room, and the his history that was made here. Yeah. and those historic recordings that happen right here, right where we're sitting. I was going to say, where we have our chairs is basically under this green light is where, I'm sure he had some kind of spotlight done, <laughs> is where Elvis stood for the vocals. Yes, this the, was his stage. Yeah. Yes, and then the RCA truck was parked outside the window. They put blankets on the right. walls. Of course, the carpeting on the ceiling made this room ideal already for recording because of mm -hmm. the acoustic value of it. They didn't have the waterfall running at the time. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but pushed everything out of the way, brought in the musicians, and then all Elvis had to do was come from upstairs down here. And Yeah, the, the story is, you know, Elvis would, would leave Graceland and drive over on Interstate 40 to Nashville to cut at RCA Studio B. Mm -hmm. And by this time in 76, he's like, nah, I don't really feel like going to Nashville. And they say, that's okay, we'll, we'll bring the studio to you. Yes, and you know, it was, they were hoping to get, you know, 20 tracks at the time, I'm up, if I'm thinking right. You know, Felton was really having a lot of goals for this session. Mm -hmm. But I think the, my favorite part of the story is in the process of bringing the studio here, what happened to the RCA mobile studio truck yeah, on the yeah. way here. Broke down, yeah, according to Ernst well. Jorgensen's book, uh, Elvis Day by Day, broke down about 130 miles away from Memphis and has to get towed through the gates of Graceland <laughs> into the back. Can you imagine an iconic moment like that? You're being able to drive <laughs> up the front driveway of Graceland and you had to come by a tow truck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, this album came out in the summer of 76 mm -hmm. and I was 16 years old and this is one of my, I, I love 70s Elvis. I'm a big 70s Elvis fan because that was the Elvis I knew that was I was buying records in the 70s and coming to Memphis to see him in concert. And this album recorded here at the Jungle Room from Elvis Presley Boulevard, mm -hmm. Memphis, Tennessee. And it comes out in the summer of 76. And even as a 16 year old, I'm listening to these songs and they're and they're all kind of a have a theme to them. And even at 16 years old, I kind of noticed where Elvis's mind mm -hmm. must have been at the time. Exactly. Um, I mean, the sessions are so iconic and, you know, him being in his house and ha being comfortable, you know, in his environment. But he was going through a lot. Yeah. And the session really, you know, the songs they were singing and the choices he was making at the time really had that whole tone that, you know, he was going through something. Yeah. And um, the music, like with everyone's music, you express yourself you know, with what's going on in your life, what mm -hmm. you know and what's happening. And at that point in time, the music that Elvis was producing was exactly what he was going yeah. through. Yeah, yeah. Songs, you know, by Larry Gatlin, Jerry Chestnut, Neil Sedaka. I mean, all, all those songs that, that he cut on, on the Elvis Presley album, and then later in the year they cut some more that were included on Moody Blue, mm -hmm. which is a little more upbeat. Yeah. But I'm wondering, and, 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 and since I saw you with your archival box over there, and we have our archival gloves yes. on, you know, Elvis was a fan of so much different kind of music, and as a kid hearing those songs 
on the Elvis Presley Boulevard album, I didn't realize a lot of them were cover songs that other artists had done. And you found evidence of Elvis's love of this music earlier in his life. Actually, yes, because I just I pulled a couple of the records that from Elvis's collection of songs that are actually on these albums. Mm -hmm. um, probably one of the earliest ones I have here is this 1967-45 by Tom Jones. Yeah. On the Parrot label. On the Parrot label, yeah. wow. yes. <laughs> and it's You'll Never Fall the in Love Again, yep. which yep. Elvis recorded right here in this room. You know, again, Never Fallen in Love Again, Hurt, yeah. Solitaire. Just the, the better the, they are, the harder they, they fall. fall. Yeah. You know, there's a theme going on with all of yeah. this music. Um, the other thing that I brought is one of Elvis's I guess you could say major influences or one mm -hmm. of the people that he actually loved Roy to Hamilton. listen to, and that's Roy yeah. Hamilton. Right. right. And probably my favorite song to come from the Jungle Room Sessions was actually a Roy Hamilton song, and mm -hmm. it was Hurt. That is one of the most iconic later Elvis songs, and I think of all the songs recorded in the Jungle Room, that was the one that you said, yep, the voice was still there. It yes. was so powerful. It was very strong. I mean, no matter if he was, in other songs, having troubles with different keys and wanting to do things mm -hmm. in different keys and things, when Hurt came along, he nailed it. Yeah, yeah. And it actually is track six. This is Elvis's copy. Oh, wow. Elvis' copy Roy of Roy Hamilton. Hamilton's Hurt. And Hurt. Wow. Look at that. This is why we wow. wear white gloves. <laughs> And, and you were talking before I that's to Elvis's me that Elvis's love of music, so many different, even on this album, so many mm -hmm. different kinds mm -hmm. of songs. Roger Whitaker, you know, an English singer yeah. with The Last Farewell, <laughs> which sounds like a wailing song, like you're, <laughs> he's going off to sea. Yes. And then, you know, uh, Bitter They Are, The Harder They Fall, the, the, the Larry Gatlin, Gatlin. song. Mm -hmm. And then there's, there's a line in one of the songs, you know, a man so busy going up in the world that he couldn't see love coming down. Coming down. Mm -hmm. I mean, wow. It just sends chills through you when, when you think about, mm -hmm. you know, what he was going through. And, you know, one of the things we were talking about when we were talking about the RCA truck, mm -hmm. you know what we've got in the archives here at Graceland? They have an interview with Mike Moran, who was a recording engineer, inside the RCA truck parked out here in back of the jungle room. Let's see what Mike had to say about what was going on mm -hmm. here at Graceland. I'm Mike Moran. My job is I'm a master recording engineer at the time for RCA Records, and my job was to get together, the session together, and all the sound that we needed for Elvis to work with. Now, this is the first time I saw the Jungle Room with furniture in it. There was nothing in it. We just set up a whole studio in there for the drums, the uh, chorus, the, uh, the whole rhythm section, piano, and Elvis all around the room. You know, a little separation here and there. But that's how we set up the room. No furniture at all. Elvis stood just in front of the kitchen, the entrance to the kitchen there. The band was ready by 9 p.m. But Elvis wouldn't be. He'd come in. But it was best because we got the sound of the band first. Anyhow, and then when Elvis came in, he was ready to start on a song right away with one rehearsal or something. And uh, it would be about midnight or... But then he got into it and he started and he was in a good mood. You know, and they're joking around. And every session he'd start off at the piano and the whole group singing gospel. That's how they warmed up the voices and everything. And then we'd start recording and work till the wee hours. And uh, we were on the remote truck right outside the door, but we had a TV camera inside so we could watch what was going on. They, didn't, they weren't even going to let us use the TV camera, but we just needed it to see who was doing what, you know, and uh, things. So, and he even came on the truck and he says, oh, you can see me. <laughs> <laughs> it was Mike Moran who was a recording engineer in the RCA truck parked out in back of the Jungle Room for the uh, Jungle Room sessions. And, you know, some of the music that he heard mm -hmm. in, the, in the truck that was before it was all mixed. Felton would take it back to Nashville and add strings and other voices to it. So, you know, Elvis is in here with James Burton and Norbert Putnam and Glenn Dee and mm -hmm. David Briggs and all those musicians. And then Felton would take it back to Nashville and add all the stuff to it, you know, to, to really polish it. Exactly. So, and then somehow that would get to Elvis? Yeah, what would happen is that Elvis would receive recording references so that he could listen to it and basically give his blessing. And so I brought a few 
from the Psychonic Sessions. The first one we have is for Hurt. Wow, so this is this is the one Elvis would have played upstairs. Uh, in his room. In his, in his room, mm -hmm. in his wow. office, and listened yeah. to. And, and listened yeah, to. That's, and that's, that's, that mix is okay. That's what I like, yeah. you know. And then on the back of that one, we have For the Heart. For the uh, Heart, yeah. And then this one is She Thinks I Still Care mm -hmm. with a flip side of Mood <laughs> Blue. <laughs> mood Blue. Instead yes. of Moody Blue, but Mood, mood Blue. blue. Um, so these are Elvis's actual references that he would listen to. <coughs> and it even says on the label there, uh, reference recording, RCA reference recording. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. But just to imagine to be Mike and being in the truck and hearing all of the music in the raw. You could really hear the yeah. power of Elvis's voice. You know, especially when he was recording such songs as Hurt, yeah. as she thinks I still. And you know, you know. I, I don't want to overemphasize, you know, where Elvis was mentally too, because there's when you listen to to the Jungle Room sessions, uh, which is the FTD release with with a lot of the raw tape of. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of fun that was going on. Oh, there too, was a whole lot that. of fun. I mean, the telephone ringing. Yeah, that telephone probably right over there. <laughs> right around the corner, there yeah. was, was ringing. You know, there was a lot of fun that happened. You yeah. know, it was also during those sessions that the famous Elvis gave people shirts out of the, his closet session <laughs> right, happened yeah. that everyone talks about. It's like, oh yeah, that happened, you yeah. know? So they did, they had a good time. Lisa talks about it sometimes because she was here. She remembers those mm -hmm. sessions happening, you know? So the house was alive. There was a whole lot of music going on. There was a lot of fun going on, you know? And they yeah. also had to get serious and get some work done as well, yeah. so. But you know, all these years later, as, as, the, as the fans come through the mansion and, and, and look into this room and, and imagine what happened here, this room still has had music. Music in it. Yes, it has. I mean, that I think that's what's so amazing about this room is because, you know, Elvis was the first one to record in here. The last one to record in here was Lisa. You know, and in between Lisa and Elvis, we've had everyone from John Cougar Mellencamp who's recorded in here to Kid Rock. <laughs> you know, so the room itself is still very much alive with music and it mm -hmm. still has that vibe that you yeah. know what Elvis loved about recording here and what you know all of these other artists who have recorded here have come away with is yeah. that it is just it, it's a place to be it's a moment in time and to be able to stand here and record in the same spot that Elvis Presley did mm -hmm. it's quite amazing all different kinds of music come together and want to do that and I also want to say something because we had a moment in a, in a previous Gates of Graceland, in a hidden Graceland, uh, that we found in Elvis' stereo mm -hmm. of 45 to the song Feelings by yes. Morris Albert, which mm -hmm. was a huge oh, hit, wow. gigantic hit in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And our research has found, in Ernst Jorgensen's great book, has found that Elvis worked in the jungle room one night for hours on a recording of Feelings by Morris Albert. So th exactly. that must have been much like these were reference records for Elvis. Elvis must have had the stereo on and, and been listening to. Uh, that's what that they would 45. listen to, you know, when they before they would record a song like with the Roy Hamilton album and things like that. They mm -hmm. would put on the reference music, mm -hmm. and that's what they were listening to. And we did. We found that forty-five. It's still in there, by the way. <laughs> it is. Yes. <laughs> and you know, I think that the funny part of that story is that he worked on it for hours, didn't like any of the takes and have them record over it. Yeah. So oh, it doesn't wow. exist. Yeah. All yeah. the only thing that we have proof of is the story behind it and the fact that that 45 is still sitting That's back right. there. That's right. And this album again the you know from Elvis Presley Boulevard Memphis Tennessee and then also songs from the Jungle Room were on Mo the Moody Blue album. Angie, we want to thank you so much for bringing us down from the archives all these incredible stories and and this amazing these amazing possessions of Elvis and it just feels like these should be back in this room. Yes. You know, this music on these grooves came from this room, and they're mm -hmm. back now. And thank you for thank you for bringing this down to us. And please go out. And I know right now you're going to turn this off, and you're going to go listen to Elvis Presley Boulevard and Moody Blue, right? <laughs> yes. That's that's what I'm going to go listen to. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. I'm going to gonna gonna do. Yeah. I'm start out with For the Heart, and then I'm going to go to Her. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Everybody, thanks for joining us on the Gates of Graceland. I'm Tom Brown. That's Angie Marchese, and we'll see you back real soon. Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, the Gates of Graceland Jungle Room Sessions video. I thought it was pretty interesting and um, I kind of like that story of the RCA truck breaking down like 130 miles out before it got to Graceland. I thought that was pretty funny so they had to tow the uh, mobile recording truck all the way to Graceland so they could record these sessions. That I thought was funny and I thought uh, seeing like some of 
the like 45s that Elvis had laying around that he would listen to. Seeing those, that was pretty cool. And then they had the, um, I guess you could say like the demos that Elvis would listen to to kind of put his stamp of approval on it before, you know, they put it out on the album. That was pretty cool to see that. So, now like I said earlier, um, some people seem to have like uh, different opinions really on why Elvis recorded uh, in the Jungle Room in 76. So, some say it was more or less an artistic approach by Elvis uh, to record in an informal setting like some of the cutting edge artists of that time were doing. But then I read in, a, in another place where, I don't know if you guys heard of Peter Goralnik, and he's the author of Last Train to Memphis. Yeah, Last Train to Memphis. And in, in his book, he states that it, it wasn't even uh, Elvis's decision to do that. And I'll read you guys a snippet of what he said and uh, it says, in, in his 1999 Elvis Presley biography, Peter Goralnik asserted that the decision to record at Graceland was not the singers. Both the Colonel and RCA were in full agreement. They needed to obtain product from an artist who appeared to have developed an almost pathological aversion to the recording studio. They now proposed simply to install temporary equipment in the den behind the kitchen, run lines out to the RCA mobile recording truck that would be parked behind the house and make the best of whatever sound deficiencies arose. So, it's like, you know, what do you believe? I mean, um, I've read some of Pre Peter Goralnik's book, but he clearly states in the beginning of his book that, you know, some of the things he says, um, you could find out basically the next day that that could be wrong. So it's just one of those things. Now, maybe people that were closest to him would know the exact truth on that. But either way, um, I thought it, it produced, those sessions produced uh, some pretty good songs. Now, I, I, I read something, you know, how some of the people around said, you know, that it was hard, you know, they would come in, some of the band members, like around 9 o'clock, and it would take a while for Elvis to come down. They said the waiting, and sometimes he seemed a little, like, off his game or whatnot. But at that time, I think, you know, Elvis's health was getting, you know, a little worse. So that might have played something into that. I, I don't know, but if you look at from Elvis Presley Boulevard, in Memphis, Tennessee, a lot of those songs like Hurt, uh, Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain, I'll Never Fall in Love Again, uh, Bitter They Are or Harder They Fall. Uh, now these songs are like, I don't want to say depressing, but they're, it seems like kind of like almost, like you could almost feel like Elvis, what he was going through at that time. But then on Moody Blue, um, it was, it's a little bit, like Tom Brown said in the video, it's, it's a little bit lighter. Um, there's like little darling is on that. Uh, and actually Moody Blue, the Moody Blue song was actually, um, it was put on the Moody Blue album in October, but it was actually recorded in February in those, those first sessions. So that album seemed to be a little bit, uh, lighter I guess you could say as far as the mood went but clearly from Elvis Presley Boulevard in Memphis Tennessee you could see there was I don't know just what Elvis was you could feel what he was feeling at the time you know there, there seemed to be a little bit of heartache there in that album from the songs that he chose to record so um I, I could I can't give an opinion on I guess it's just one of those things if uh, maybe somebody closer to him knows the truth to that as to why he chose the Jungle Room. I know um, Stack Studio closed in 1970, uh, 1975, I believe, and American Sound Studio 
closed in 1972 and both studios were in Memphis. So now I think, you know, I'm, I'm guessing Elvis just didn't want to travel. He used to go all the way to Nashville uh, way before these albums to record. And maybe with those studios closing down, maybe just his overall train of thought was he was just, maybe he was just tired of the commute and he just wanted to be, because, you know, he did those recordings in American Sound, you know, in 69, and then he did some recordings at Stax and and uh so maybe it was just one of those things he was just you know he just didn't want to make that long commute anymore maybe it was that i don't know i mean that there's conflicting uh points of view as to why he wanted to record at home in the jungle room but either way you know and you know like like they said in the video there were I've heard a couple of people say it, it wasn't like, you know, some people seem to say, oh, it was a dark time. A few people that would have said, you know, Elvis was Elvis, you know, he, you know, in between uh, recordings, he was having fun, you know, he would joke around with the band and the guys. So it wasn't exactly like a, a dark thing, you know, at that time. So I heard some people say, oh, it's just, you know, those, you know, recordings, he was just totally depressed. I don't think so. Uh, judging from the people around him, it, it sounded like, you know, he might have been going through some things maybe, but he would, it was still a lighthearted atmosphere and Elvis was still Elvis. So, but either way, a lot of these songs that were, were recorded in February of 76 and October of 76, I think a lot of them are really, really good songs and one of my favorites is on there, Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain. That That's probably uh, Behind Bridge Over Troubled Water. That's probably my favorite song from Elvis. And it and, uh, it's the, actually, that's the last song he recorded, not recorded, that's the last song. Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain is the last song he actually ever played. Um, that the night before he passed away, he was just hanging around with Billy Smith and his wife, Joe, and his girlfriend, Ginger, and they all said that Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain was the last song that he ever sang for anybody. So, and then on uh, Moody Blue, I think the last, last song Elvis ever recorded was um, He'll Have to Go. So that's just a little side note on that. So anyway, I hope you guys liked, um, I hope you enjoyed the uh, Gates of Graceland Jungle Room sessions. There was, I thought there was some pretty uh, cool stuff in there and pretty interesting things that they talked about. Anyway, I hope you guys are all doing great. And as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Um, if you haven't, please do. And as always, TCB, God bless.